Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger, go stronger, go stronger, go stronger. Holy Hour of Power High Energy Catholic Radio My name is Jesse Romero the Latin lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Latin lover of Our Lady. And I'm Terry Barber, healthy now, the Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Lebanese lover of Our Lady. Thanks be to God, Jess. I've got an exciting show here. I hope it's going to inspire people to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church. We aspire to inspire until we expire. Amen, and we brother. Do so, <laughs> we do so with a PhD in common sense. I love it. Let's hey, get right into get, our soul hey food man, section. Open up your Bibles, folks. That's right. I want to little, uh, give a little shout out to all the guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, to all the people yesterday uh, over the weekend at Jacksonville, Florida. Got a lot of new listeners. Absolutely. As, uh, as a result of the Eucharistic Congress. And uh, got a lot of other new listeners also. Yesterday was the... Uh, the annual uh, Phoenix, Arizona Charismatic Conference. Good. We got uh, a bunch of new listeners from there as well. So shout out to both you guys. Thanks for inviting me to your uh, to your events. Okay. Soul food section. Amen. John chapter 4, mm -hmm. verses 43 to 54. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. That's important because a lot of people call Terry and myself, email us, talk to us in public and say, I, you know, these are good Catholic, yeah. part of Catholics. I've been trying to evangelize my family and they just seem to blow me off. And there's just, Terry, there's nothing that I can seem to do. I invite them to this, that, and the other, to mass, to the sacraments, to the legion. They don't want nothing to do with the church. Well, just remember what Jesus Christ says to us. A prophet is not, has no honor in his native place. Sometimes it takes somebody outside of the family to evangelize your family. So just remember that and just pray for the grace. Pray for their guardian angel to evangelize them or that their guardian angel brings somebody in their life that will evangelize them because as Jesus Christ says, it probably won't be you. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him since they, had, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. Here's something interesting as you continue reading, John. The two types of Jews, you have the Jews in the north, the Galileans, uh, that generally believed in Jesus because that's where he started his miracles. Then you got the Jews from the south, that's Judea. They're the ones that were hostile to Jesus. Yep. They're the ones from Jerusalem, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They had wanted nothing to do with his claims of being the Messiah. So in the small little country of Israel, the interesting part is geographically, the, the Israelites from the north were more open to, okay, he's the Messiah. He's the son of God. Let's follow him. The ones from the south were called Jews. They wanted nothing to do with him or his message. To understand the gospel of John, you got to keep that in mind. Okay. Now, there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. Again, this is the second miracle that Jesus now performs. The first one was the wedding, uh, the, the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. This is the second one that he performs in his ministry. Notice where he performs his first two miracles. Yep. Okay, In northern Israel, to the northern Israelites. They were more simple people. They were more rural people. And they believed more in Jesus Christ than the sophisticated Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes in the south. And notice we hear, 
We see here an example. It's called vicarious faith. And this is also why, mom and dad, your faith is very important to bring blessings upon your children. Uh, I mean, the fact is, Catholic theology teaches that, mom and dad, you not only have the power to bless your children, you also have the power to drive out evil spirits from your right. children and your household. That's Catholic teaching. In fact, I'm working on a booklet right now because people keep asking me, where are you getting this? I'm giving you like 200 quotes from the saints and doctors of the church that say this. It'll be a small pamphlet. Hopefully I'll have it by the Spiritual Warfare Conference Good. because this is the question that I answer over and over again. Jesse, where do you get this stuff from that we can that we have the power to drive out evil spirits from our house and from our children? Don't worry, you'll have that But for the main conference. And we see here, again, this, this parent is asking Jesus, can you heal my son? And, and what do I do, or, or Terry, when we call our blessings upon our children? Amen. We're calling Jesus to bless our children. It isn't me. I got no power. Terry has no nope. power over our children. When I do my exilium Christianorum prayers at night to protect my house from evil spirits, I got no power. Those prayers are to Jesus through Mary. He's the one that drives out evil spirits for my kids and from my house. It isn't just Romero. I have no power. We continue. The royal official says to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked them, he asked them when he began to recover. They told him, the fever left him yesterday about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time, Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he and his whole household came to believe. Notice something interesting here. He and his whole household. This is very Catholic. Protestants had this me and Jesus theology. Me and Jesus, me and Jesus. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not, that's not a complete understanding of the New Testament. Because the New Testament continues to talk to us about the household in Jesus. The household in Jesus. That's why Catholics, we baptize our babies even though they have not hit the age of reason. Because vicariously, through the head of the household, God's blessing comes upon our children vicariously because this is based on the New Testament teaching of household salvation based on the faith of mom and dad. Then it says... Uh, <clears throat> And uh, now this was the second sign that Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. The second sign, the miracle, the, the Greek word there is miracle. It's the second miracle he performed. The first one was the wedding feast in Cana. So once again, you see there's believing Jews in the north, and a lot of the unbelieving Jews are in the south. Jesse, I saw this gospel lived out in front of me 28 years ago. My friend Fidel Jimenez, one of his babies, he had seven children. The youngest daughter was about a year old, dying of cancer. And he took the little, he, he, wanted, he wanted Father Aloysius, whose cause is up for a sainthood, to come and bless the baby. But Father Aloysius, who was known for miracles in his lifetime, I used to go there every month for a prayer meeting in Los Angeles. Well, Father Aloysius had open heart surgery, and he was recovering at home at the rectory. <clears throat> Fidel Jimenez went there with the intention of asking Father to come and bless his baby. When he came downstairs, Father was wrapped up in a robe he couldn't he you know he, he was barely very weak he couldn't go anywhere he told fidel hey fidel read this john 4 read this gospel because i'm telling you right now your little girl has been healed the faith that you have will heal your daughter i want you to go home you'll see that she she no longer has cancer and fidel having a simple faith said okay father your word's good for me he goes home takes the baby to the doctor who said she only had a couple weeks to live and they couldn't find any cancer in that little baby. Now, I want to tell you the rest of the story. That little girl ended up becoming a nun for Mother Lily's sisters. You know what that little girl does right now? She prays before the Blessed Sacrament 24-7 for priests. Jesse, this gospel was lived out. It's happening today, not just 2,000 years ago. Isn't that a beautiful it's story? It's it's happening over and yes. over and over again. Yes. Jesse, I want to bring Fulton Sheen in before we move on. Let's bring Sheen. Hey, there he is. Absolutely. Fulton Sheen ahead. This is very appropriate for what we're going to be covering later in the show about loving our enemies, loving people who we don't think are doing what's supposed to be doing. He says, loving, you may not like somebody. I know a lot of people I don't like, but you can still love them because loving is a duty. It is good for your soul. 
it also glorifies God. If you do an injury to someone you do not like, you will dislike him still more. If you do a favor to someone you do not like, you will love him more. Hard, hard, easy to say, hard to do, my brother, because I have to be honest with you, Jesse. We're going to talk about Father Martin later in the show. I was supposed to meet him last year at the Religious Ed Congress, and I couldn't do it because I didn't have any love in my heart. I was so angry. This year, I wanted to see him, and I was going to have love with truth and charity, but I got sick over the weekend. My point, Jesse, is this is easy to say, but I'm going to tell I'm I'm weak, Jesse. Do. I'm weak. I have a hard time doing that. Hey, Terry, uh, as we, uh, up next, we're going to oh. talk about uh, oh yeah, the movie Unpl- Unplanned. A big success. It is something that every Catholic, every Protestant should go and, and, and watch as soon as possible. Yep. If you didn't get to watch it over the weekend, watch it this week for sure. Storm the theaters. We're also going to talk about the replacement to the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. We'll tell you who the replacement is going to be. And we're also going to share with you yep. some very inspirational, uh, an inspirational story or a message from Archbishop Charles Chaput, oh, was not Catholics. In other words, he's saying, "Hey guys, don't lo- you know God doesn't lose at the end, so nope. don't lose heart exactly. and keep all things in perspective." And so we're going to profile uh, again a great bishop, a courageous bishop that speaks to us like Vince Lombardi. And we're going to also talk about another bishop that we need to pray for because we don't want the same trajectory to continue in Washington, the McCarrick, the world trajectory. And so we have to pray for the new archbishop that he he could uh, become a St. Thomas More in Washington, D.C. That's what we need, Terry. Yep, we'll be right back with much, much more. May God bless all of us in trying to serve the church and his bride, the church. We'll be right back with much more. This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. You can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee... They will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. Terry, the movie Unplanned awesome. is, uh, is, is going to do a lot of damage to Planned Parenthood, Big just time. like the movie Gosnell, just because yep, these thing. are movies that are just factual, yep. just the facts, just the facts. Right. And, and, and this movie did pretty well this weekend time, yeah. for not having any major advertisement. The only, Terry, the only channel yeah. that has carried advertisement for Unplanned is Fox News. Yep. No other TV network, no other TV channel, no other TV news network uh, has has conceded to advertise for this movie. Is is that? Uh, and there's a that, reason uh, for it. That, yeah. Is that? Uh, does that surprise? No, it doesn't. It, it, only, it's consistent. Ne- the only persons that are advertising this movie are Fox News. That's it. Just nobody else. But Terry, what happened this week? Well, we got six point one million dollars were spent to go see that movie. It was well received in the South, Midwest, and the West did well too. So I want to congratulate all us people who went to go see the movie. I'm st- I'm have not seen it. I need to go see it, but I've been trying to get better from my pneumonia. Yeah. But I want to I want to just say this, Jesse. It shocked people because they were expecting three point. 1 million and it doubled what their expectations so the people with the movie they're very excited and i might add also here at virgin most powerful starting thursday we have a brand new show dr uh, nick nick barbara nicolosi i should say barbara nicolosi who did shows uh movie reviews for ewtn for immaculate heart radio we now have her on our team okay she switched uh, jerseys just like we switched jerseys from Relevant Radio to, to from Immaculate now to Virgin Most Powerful because of your support, I might add, folks. We could put another show together. So on Thursday, she's going to be interviewing the, the main uh, person. Protagonist. Yes, who, exactly. And she's going to do a review on the movie Unplanned, and then she'll be doing each week uh, reviews, and I think it's going to be an added blessing to Virgin Most Powerful. So, Barbara Nicolosi, Terry, you're telling me this Thursday. One o- noon, right after in, our show on Thursday. Yeah, she's going to interview the leading lady. That's correct. Her name is Ashley Bratcher. Ashley, right. She's the one that played the role of Abby Johnson. Yep. She's an actress. Her name is Abby Ashley Bratcher. Barbara knows her well. Yep. Barbara's going to be interviewing her. And, Terry, I can imagine. we got to pray for this young actress. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that her career has probably taken a hit. Oh, are you kidding me? And and by the way, there's been a lot of the the ones that wrote the movie, Terry. They're two converts to the Catholic faith. Yeah, we met them. Yeah, we've it's met them. Religious him. director Gary so- uh, Gary Solomon, and I'm I'm trying to think about the other guy. I can't there's, remember, there's but two, I, we met him. Yeah, they're they're two converts to the Catholic faith. W- one of the things that happened to this actress as she was coming to shoot for one of the scenes, the the this this actress uh, Ashley Bratcher, mm-hmm. Terry, she's driving down the road. Yep. And a deer jumps backwards. Not, backwards. Not, Terry, not forwards. A, the a devil does everything backwards. Jumps, exactly. Demon. A deer jumps backwards onto the windshield of her car as she's driving, and she almost crashed and died. Yeah, that now, makes sense. I don't sense. know about you, Terry. That makes I've sense. I've never seen a deer no. in my life, and I've watched a lot of National Geographic. I've never seen a deer jump backwards. They, they don't. Jump yeah, forwards. Yes, yes, they don't. And here's what's interesting. Uh, demons do everything in reverse. That's my so first reaction, yep. It goes to show you the, the attack. So just pray for this. Uh, uh, the guys that made the movie, Solomon and his team, pray for this actress. And, uh, and go out this week, storm the theaters, and take your family to a movie night and go watch this movie. Terry, I want to talk a little bit now from the good news to not so good news. No. Well, I, it's suspect news. Yeah. Archbishop Wilton Gregory, yep. he's, uh, it's, he's, it, Pope Francis, it looks like he's going to appoint That's him we hear. as the next Archbishop of Washington, according to multiple sor- right. sources right. that are telling the Catholic News Agency. Yep. So he'll become the seventh Archbishop of Washington, succeeding Cardinal Donald Worrell. So we're going to find out later on this week if there's a formal pronouncement or announcement from, from Rome. So technically, there's no archbishop in Washington since Cardinal World's resignation. Right. Since, but Cardinal World has been the interim. He's been serving as the interim leader of the archdiocese since that time. So uh, we've all been waiting for five months. Who's going to succeed Cardinal World? Because Cardinal World, uh, it's been established that he's part of this whole cabal, this whole cover-up cabal, and that's not what we need. The church needs to be... You know, I know people use the word transparency. No, we need truthful truth. leaders. Get that to word out of here. Forget transparency. We're not politicians. Exactly. We're Christians. 
We need people to tell the truth, Amen. cardinals and bishops. And so uh, Gregory Wilton is 71 years old. Thanks be to God. And so he has a couple of years left. Amen. And uh, he's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jesse, it, I said that it, with that. Yes, I'm glad. And, and Jesse, I, I yeah, know my... He'll, he, uh, he'll be retiring at four years. Five. Yeah. So he doesn't have that much no. left if they he, appoint He's him. known as an administrator. I get all that. But you know the part I don't get, Jesse? I've got priest friends who knew him in the diplomatic uh, corps in, in Rome, and it wasn't good. It wasn't pretty. Monsignor Harris, a friend of mine, told me, he said, you know, uh, he's not what you would call orthodox in his in his teachings of the church. And I, I understand that there's a reason why the, they're putting him in Washington. He's an administrator. Personally, uh, I've seen what he's done with Father um, Martin, James Martin, allowing him to speak. He totally endorses him, Terry. Yeah, he's, so that speaks volumes right there, brother. That says everything you need to know. That's all. Yeah. So it, it looks like he's going to be appointed the leader of Washington. Yep. He'll only be there four years, hopefully, uh, if he's appointed. Yeah. And uh, and I'll tell you why why he's suspect in my book, Terry. Oh, tell me, Jess. I'll, ta- I'll tell you why he's Hit me. suspect. Hit me. Okay. Well, he was he was part of the the commission that was leading the American hierarchy during the fallout back in 2002 during the, the first sexual abuse scandals. So Wilton Gregory, he oversaw the formation and the implementation of the Dallas Charter. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, 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 and basically, they're the ones that had the Dallas Charter say that the problem was pedophilia, yeah. which we all know it's not. And we'll, we'll see what Bishop Chapus is after in the next Good segment. Difference. So Wilton Gregory was one of the orchestrators of the Dallas Charter and the USCCB's essential norms in 2002, where Terry, they were spinning the message and they were saying, we've got a pedophilia crisis and we're going to take care of this pedophilia crisis and here's what we're going to do. Here are the new policies and directives. I hate those words from bishops, policies and directives. I don't find that, Terry, I don't find that in the New Not Testament. Biblical, I'm brother. sorry. Yeah, I, don't, I don't find that in the Bible. Nope. We want to take care of sin? Here's the new policies and directives, oh the apostles. Oh my gosh. I just don't find that to be New Testament language. And I'll tell you why I also... Tell me. I'm not very happy with if he's appointed. I know people are saying, oh, but he's going to be the first African-American Archbishop of Washington. Who cares about color? What's that got to do with it? Quit getting so caught up in color. You know, that's liberal identity politics. He's black, so that's a good thing. No, it isn't. You know what? I care about character, not skin color. There's no... I believe what what Dr. Luther King says... (laughs) Don't tell, don't show me your skin color. Who cares? Truth show me the no content color. of your character. And here's Terry. The, here's the content tell of his character that we know. Tell me. He served as an auxiliary bishop in Guess his home diocese Chicago. under drumroll, please. Yep. Cardinal Joseph Bernard. Says it all from 1983 until 1994. Yep. Terry, there's very good evidence that oh, this yeah. cardinal was a homosexual. <laughs> Show okay. me your friends. Very good. Uh, here's one one of the things that we know. Mm-hmm. When he died, Cardinal Joseph Bernardine, he had a homosexual Protestant male choir sing at his funeral, and he already had this. He already oh, it's had already this, planned out. It was already planned out. Yeah. And so it's not like somebody just yeah. hired these guys. You know, no, the, no. the day before the funeral, no. it was already written in his will. Now, if I die. Hey guys, notice. No, no. When I you die, homo, if I have a homosexual choir, oh, I, I will be Spe- uh, singing for me at my funeral mass. Ain't you guys know I was a closet homosexual. Period. Yeah, that's all that says. Yeah, and so Terry, that's that doesn't speak well about him. That he's one of Cardinal Joseph Borner Dean's proteges. Another thing that doesn't speak well of him. Yeah, is that uh, he's he's inviting to his diocese in Atlanta, Georgia, right now because that's where he's at. Yeah. He's inviting to several parishes the very well-known heterodox priest, Father James Martin, the popular Jesuit and the editor of America Magazine, and he's written several books which apparently are selling well amongst Catholic liberals. Oh, yeah. Well, he's going to be making uh, the rounds over in his diocese, and Archbishop Gregory has nothing but great things to say about him. Yeah. So that's why I'm not very happy about his pending appointment. You know, Jesse, it's all on our website. All these articles demonstrated all the endorsements of Father Martin. 
I, it's just shocking that we have to put up with this. But I have good news because when we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about Archbishop Chapu. And I have another comment from Cardinal Seurat when he says, the church is dying because the shepherds are afraid of speaking the truth with clarity. I said that. No, I didn't. But I agree with the cardinal who said that. Hey, Jesse, I've got some more good news to lift people up. South Dakota's governor signed multiple pro-life laws, including, and I love this, an ultrasound requirement to the end-of-life parental involvement. Jesse, do you realize 80% of the people, mothers, see their ultrasound and they keep the baby? This is a law that I hope would go across the country because more and more people, when they see their baby inside of them, especially the mothers, they go, it's a baby. Yeah, but they don't tell you that when you go into Planned Parenthood. They would never show you an ultrasound. I want to just say kudos to South Dakota and other states. And Jesse, one more good news. Since January 1st, hundreds of pro-life legislation has been promote, promoted it, now since we have a new sheriff in town, President Trump, because we're finding out now that the mode right now in our country is changing. And I think we're, God willing, we're going to see a day when Roe versus Wade is rescinded and the sanctity of life again will be protected. That's my I think prayer. these two. I think Gosnell and Unplanned oh, yeah. have a big, a big Huge. thing to do with it. Huge. They're shocking the country. They're waking people up from a coma. Huge. Terry, I got one more bit of good news. It, I love Over good news. Over the weekend, as when I was speaking here in Phoenix, Arizona, Tell downtown, me I met a, I met a guy, Paul Zuccarelli, a lay Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, he, <laughs> incredible Tell story. Tell us. Uh, he was dead for two hours, oh and Jesus raised him from the dead. He's it. got a book I've got in my hand. I get nothing for this. It's called Faith Understood. It's, it's forwarded by Bishop Let's Tom get him Holmstead. on our show, man. I, I'm, yeah, he's coming on our show next week. I'm okay. going to have him on several times. Terry. Terry, this guy was dead for two hours. I love it. The medical reports are in here. There's three doctors that verify this. They were, not, they were not even believers, these doctors. And it. Bishop Thomas Olmsted has investigated this thing with a fine-tooth comb. He forwarded this book, and this guy's, his testimony, take out Let's your handkerchief. You're going to cry. He was dead. But you know what? You know who raised him from the dead after two Tell hours? Tell us. Wasn't Buddha. Nope. Wasn't Muhammad. Nope. Wasn't Confucius. Nope. Wasn't Zoroaster or Gandhi. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We will have him on next week. I'm going to have him on a few times. His testimony is powerful. If you want to get a taste of it, go to YouTube. Type in Paul Zuccarelli raised from the dead. I love it. Paul Zuccarelli raised from the dead. He's from Tucson, Arizona. But he just moved out here to to Phoenix. It's a bigger diocese, and he's making the rounds, giving his testimony the way Jesus Christ raised him from the dead after two hours of being clinically dead. I love no it. brain waves. No, his heart flatlined. Uh, he was. They took. They took off the incubator bag. He was dead for two hours. He's alive, and he'll tell you about it. He'll be here next week. Here at Virgin Most Powerful, we want to lift you up with these stories that that are so beautiful in this time of challenge. When we come back, Archbishop Chaput is going to lift us up with, I thought, an inspiring article. You won't want to miss it. Go get yourself a cup of coffee or some tea. We'll be right back. This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. 
We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. You can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Life is short, death is for sure, Amen. sin is the problem, and Jesus is the cure. Amen, Jesse. There is no other. Jesse. Terry, Archbishop Chapu's one of the great voices of the church today, uh, in, and I hate to say it, but I mean, uh, we no. don't. Have, not all the bishops are uh, uh, clearly speak like he does, or Bishop Olmsted. They don't talk like that. Well, before we get into that, I want to say a prayer for the church that's in need, Jesse. That because F Bishop oh, Bishop Chapu is a great man, and what his article has to say, it just resonated with both of us. But let's pray this prayer. It's from the Opus Angelorum. This is the order that Bishop Athanasius Schneider belongs to. So you can imagine. And this is an order that I'm a member of for the last 30 years, the work of the holy angels. Here's the prayer for the church. Lord Jesus Christ, back then during the storm on Lake Gensenerate, you pretended to be asleep to test your disciples' strength of faith and trust. Today, too, the, the bark of your church is in a violent storm, such as it has scarcely ever withstood. The enemy has penetrated into the church and wants to breach the bark from within, so that it may sink. O oh Lord, do not sleep. Do not test our fidelity to the faith any longer, and look upon our frightened hearts. Stretch out your hand, and command the enemy to leave the bark, whose hull he's tried to tear open. Accept our pleas and our expiatory commitment, and give your angels the strength of a decisive help, Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jess, I pray that power our, every day. You know, the reason is, is our church is under attack. Anybody that doesn't think that doesn't know what's going on. I love, uh, well, you Terry, you know me, just that you're speaking yeah. my language. It's a, it's I, a love spiritual those, I love those prayer. spiritual warfare prayers. It's yeah. something as Catholics we got to go back yeah. to. And by the way, be, just a, a bit of a, I was reading Father, uh, I just read Father Morse's book over the weekend. Again? The new one that was, <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> it, uh, the one is called My Battle Against Satan. It just there. came out. It's it, it was some of his notes that were unpublished, some unpublished interviews in the past. From yeah, Sophia Press, it. okay, everybody? Go get a yeah. copy. Yeah, he just said in there, and uh, I knew that, but it's good you hear from him, because I've been telling people this now. Um, <laughs> I, now I've got some uh, some actual uh, 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 talk about a, a, a an expert validating what I'm saying. The Our Father... Yeah, is a minor exorcism prayer. Right. Did you hear what I just said? Exactly. I've been Repeat saying this it. for years. You have. Father Amorth says it in the book. The Our Father's a minor exorcism prayer. So remember that when you pray that, pray it with faith and know that God the Father through a Son, Jesus Christ, will drive out demons from your life when you're praying it from your heart. That's right. Just what, all right, Terry, let's go to this article. This Archbishop awesome. Chaput says don't lose, God doesn't lose. He's the Archbishop of Philadelphia. Yep. He told some seminarians uh, March 27th, a few days, a, a, a month ago. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, a few, a few weeks ago. He said, Catholics are called to renew the church because through lives of holiness, humility, and love, he calls us the three essential qualities of great Catholic reformers. Again, personal humility, a passion for purifying the church, and, and holiness. He says, this is the way we're going to be the only way we're going to reform our church, because the church is, as uh, it says in Latin, the medieval axiom, the church is semper reformandi, 
always reforming. And the church can only reform through people like us, Archbishop Chapu says, lay people and clergy. And he says, God calls us, but especially as priests, to renew the face of the earth with his spirit, but to renew the heart of the church with our lives, to make her young and beautiful again and again, yep. so that she shines with his love for the world. That's our calling. That's what a vocation is, a calling from God with our name on it. Jesse, what I like about the archbishop is he calls it as he sees them. I have very few uh, bishops or archbishops who will say this. He says, confusion, anxiety, anger are sentiments that Catholic clerics and laity have felt recently. You know, he, he titled his talk, Facing the Future with Hope and Joy. And you know what? He's, he has a sense of humor. See, he's always looking on the po- He's an optimist. And before I do this, I'm just going to make a quick note. Back in 1993, when I first met him, he was the, he was just named the, uh, the Bishop of Denver, Colorado. I'm having dinner with my four kids and my wife, and he comes up to me and says, Terry Barber, how are you? Shakes my hand and says, so when is St. Joseph Communications moving to Denver? I mean, that's how bold this guy is. Wow. Okay? So I, I say that because, now, do I like him? Obviously I do. He's endorsed a lot of my projects. He loves St. Joseph Communications. But here's what happened. He said, the reason I didn't want to name this book or this title of the show Facing the Future with Confusion, Anxiety, and Anger, for that matter, is because I'm tempted to feel all three of those things a couple times a week. See, we get <laughs> we have the same feelings as lay people, but how many bishops have the guts to call it? He says, because we know we have to defend orthodox teachings in the Catholic Church, he said. And I love this because not many bishops would say that. He says, laymen and priests are angry with their bishops. Really, Bishop, you're saying that? How, Jess, where would you hear another bishop say that? Nowhere. For an abuse scandal, which never seems to end. Bishops are angry with priests for their bad example. And he says, many bishops are so frustrated. He said, to put it gently, he says, we're upset with Rome for its unwillingness to acknowledge the real nature and the scope of the real problem. He says clerical privilege is not the problem. We call it clericalism. Maybe a factor, but he says let's deal with the real problem, which is homosexuality. See, Jesse, this is a bishop who's speaking the truth in charity. And, you know, I know in Rome, Jesse, I've read from Bishop Viganos. They don't like him, Terry. They don't like him. They call him the conservative bishop in Philadelphia. You know, we don't like him. You know what? I say baloney. I say thank you, Archbishop Chapu, for not being politically correct and speaking the truth. We lay people will get behind you on this. Yeah, I forget what article. It's from a LifeSite News or a, or a Lepanto article I read a while back ago. Where, Archbishop where Vigano Pope, said that. There, with, with, with Pope Francis. Oh, was it, was it, yeah, Vigano said letter. that. The Archbishop well, it was in a letter, of letter yeah. where he said somebody in the Vatican, I forget yeah. who, yeah. said, I, it may have even been Pope Francis, if yeah. I recall. Yeah. He said that, that, yeah, <laughs> he told you. the apostolic nuncio, yep. don't recommend another archbishop for cardinal like the conservative in Philadelphia. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we know who the conservative in Philadelphia was. Of course is. we do. Hey, it's hey, Archbishop Chaput. Terry, and, and I, I want to just re- reread what you said there. Well, it's at the powerful. End this is very, this is Archbishop Chaput, not Terry Barber, not nope. myself. Okay, he says, and many bishops are also frustrated, yep. to put it gently, with Rome. Okay, Same Rome here. is the Rome is Mother Church. Okay, yep. For its unwillingness to acknowledge the real nature and scope of the abuse problem. Powerful. Why? Because Rome is saying it's clericalism. He's saying that's a factor, but he's saying this is the problem. Is is that Rome is not naming the real problem for right. what it is, a pattern of predatory homosexuality, and a failure to weed that out from the church life is an act of self-delusion. He nailed it, Jesse. And I'll tell you, if you want to see a perfect example of the way, because Rome is friendly to the homosexual Father Martin, mafia, give an example. And, and, and so, therefore, a lot of the bishops around the country will be soft on homosexual predation because they're saying, well, Rome is kind of soft on it. Pope Francis and his staff. Mm-hmm. So who are we? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Give me one. Archbishop Jose Gomez. He's he's basically taken a hands-off position at the RE Congress, and he has at least a, at least a half dozen pro-homosexual, if not actual practicing homosexuals, 
speaking there. <laughs> Why is he taking a hands-off approach? Because he's seeing Mother Church in Rome is, is basically has an unwillingness to acknowledge the problem. And so he say, well, I'm just an archbishop from L.A. I don't want to lose my post. I'll give you another example. Archbishop Gregory Wilton from Atlanta, Georgia. He's yep. probably going to go to Washington. He also has a hands-off approach on this whole issue of homosexuality. We know that uh, that uh, Father James Martin is going to be speaking in Atlanta, Georgia, in his diocese like a ping-pong ball going from one parish to yep. another. To all the LGBT. Why are the, a lot of these bishops afraid of even touching these people that are soft or promote homosexuality or maybe active homosexuals because they're looking at the Vatican. They're saying, hey, they're not saying nothing, so why, why should I say anything? Uh, and, and Archbishop Chapu says this is an act of self-delusion. Amen. And just to give you good news about that Religious Ed Congress, I verified again from another source. They were supposed to have 40,000 people there two weeks ago. They only got 20,000 adults. They were 20% less for the Youth Day for Thursday. I did the math, Jesse. It's about $2.6 million they lost. And thanks be to God, maybe people are voting with their pocketbooks. Hey, we've got Diane in Pomona. Diane, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. What's on your mind? Hi, gentlemen. How are you today? We're blessed. How about yourself? Same here. Thank Good. you. Good. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. And um, I had a question, and yeah. it's been I've been wanting to ask for a while. Mm -hmm. But I go to a parish, and... Um, you know, as I've grown in my faith and learning from you guys, I'm starting, you know, I've started to see things that I don't like, you uh -huh. know, sure. there's no tabernacle on the front. Yeah. Jesus is just on a, you know, on a outlined cross, not the crucifix, right. no rails. And, um, I have feedback here. Hold on for a second. <laughs> you're, you sound perfect yeah, on we, our end. You're good. Okay, well, I'll just keep yeah, going. Yeah. You're perfect, so aren't you? Before communion, yes. the choirs, they um, sing this, like, lullaby song mm -hmm. to prepare for communion. It's like, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, um, something like that. And I just don't think it's supposed to be sung. Yeah. Okay, Diana, um, here. Here's two things that I would share with you because it looks like you're 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 starting to red pill. You're starting to understand that there's some yep. things that that are ha that are wrong. Uh, you know, you're starting to sm smell something fishy in Denmark. If you want to see the way Vatican II has told us to celebrate Holy Mass, here's two things that I would recommend for you because you're starting to red pill. You're starting to realize like, hey, something's wrong here. There's a website called Adoramus.org. Any question on the liturgy, you're going to get a faithful Catholic right. liturgical response if you go to adoramos.org. Any question on the liturgy is answered there. Secondly, there's a book by Catholic Answers. It's all in one little, between the covers, called Mass Confusion by James Aiken. He goes through the entire Mass, and he tells you the do's and don'ts of Catholic worship. And he actually tells you from the documents of Vatican II what should be happening and how it should be done. We'll be right back with more, Diane. I have another recommendation when we come back. I'll tell everybody when we come back. This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations 
that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. You can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. We were talking to Diane regarding the liturgy, and I want to recommend a book by Pope Benedict XVI called The Spirit of the Liturgy. Ignatius Press published it back in 2000. Here's a quote, and it kind of answers your question. Whenever applause breaks out in the liturgy, because of some human achievement, it is a sure sign that the essence of the liturgy has totally disappeared and has been replaced by a kind of religious entertainment. Such attraction fades quickly. It cannot complete the mark of uh, leisure pursuits, incorporating it as increasingly does various forms of religious programming. That's a quote right from the book. And also, Diane, Jesse and I know a really good priest in Pomona from St. Joseph's Church named Father Steve. He's the pastor. Great guy. You would never find that in his liturgies at the Masses. So if it's 10 minutes away, and then, of course, if you want to come to Covina, where we are, uh, the Sacred Heart Chapel, where at 9 o'clock every Sunday we have the Anglican Ordinate Mass with sung Gregorian chant, beautiful Mass. Love to have you come there. So you, I just think people need to vote with their pocketbook in the sense of parishes, if they're not giving you the, what the church is, you know, asking to be done, then you, and especially when you're living in Southern California, there are lots of other options. Any other yeah. thoughts, Jess? Yeah, Diana, try St. Joseph's in Pomona. I know the pastor. You're not going to see yeah. any of that stuff that you mentioned at St. Joseph's in Pomona. He, he celebrates a reverent, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Novus Ordo That's Mass, right. and, uh, and, and you'll, you're, you're, you're going to experience heaven on earth there. All right, thanks All right, so much, Diane. Diana. God Thank love you. Thank you so much. And God bless you. And keep, keep getting those cards and handing them out to people, promoting a virgin I most will. powerful. Thank thanks. You. Hey, we've got Joe in Northern California. Joe, you got a comment about the movie Unplanned. What's on your mind, brother, about that? Hit me. Yeah, good morning, brothers. It's me, Joe. Oh, I know. Joe, the truck driver oh, for the good. post office. Yep. <laughs> yeah, saw Unplanned over the weekend with my with my deacon friend, Paul, and his family. Oh, yeah, Paul. What sure. a powerful movie. Very good. I'll tell you, it was a good movie. Good. And, you know, my, this early this morning, my sister sent me a text this morning. Mm -hmm. I told her about it. She's going to go see it. Done. She lives in Kansas. Mm -hmm. She texted me this morning and said the movie made $7 million. She, wrote that, she read that on... Uh, yeah, it's what? going up all the time. It was 6.1 this yeah, morning. Yeah, it's, it's going up, and it's going up, believe me. Good. It was a very powerful movie, I tell you. The, yeah, it, it was, I'm not giving it any way we want to go see it, but... I tell you, it, is, it needs to be seen by a lot of people. They need, they need to spread the word Thanks, and get Joe. it out. Get Good it job. Out. I'm glad and you also, went to see it. And also, I did too. I'm glad we, glad we went and saw it too. We saw some people there too that we knew that, uh, you know, we were probably seen that. We saw them, sat there, talked to them after the movie theater anyway. Good. And I'll also say too about the reverence of the church. Our pastor here at the church we had to, Jesse, you were there at the church of St. Bruno. He spent some money and he, ha he, had, he had our tabernacle, he had the candles, and he had a few other things refurbished and they Praise look God. beautiful and we had some guys come up from los angeles or did, 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 did i think they came from dallas to re, to redo everything it looks beautiful up there good job beautiful church we have a, we have a pastor that's really taken care of the church and the tabernacle's been there since i you know the the, uh, the early 40s or 50s i can't remember when but mm. it has been redone and it looks beautiful Thanks. gentlemen thank you very much for the call keep it up i'm okay, listening Joe. to you every single day i hope you can make God the spirits i hope you can make the men's conference june 15th brother I, uh, that's what I just want to say. I'm coming. Yes, sir. I will be there with, with, my, with my. Introduce yourself. Director. You want to meet? I know, you know Joe. You'll know him, Jess, when you see him. Director. We're coming down. You're a good man, right, Joe. Brother. Hey, can you can you play the? Right. Can you hit the uh, button on your horn to, for the truck? Are you in the truck? 
One more time. Here you go. God bless you all. I'm God bless you. Here we go. <laughs> all right, God brother. Bless. God bless you. Okay, bye. All righty. Hey, we've got uh, John in Kentucky. Uh, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. John, you're always welcome to call. What's on your mind, brother? Thank you, uh, Terry. I, I was, I'm was i out here uh, stacking wood <laughs> um, and listening uh, for, for next it. year, you know, and, and I was listening to you on my phone, and you were talking about anger, and I'm sitting here getting all this righteous anger <laughs> building up with me. I, I, I wasn't going to call. I said, dang, I can't believe it. And um, so thanks for taking my call. Sure. But, but if, if anybody wants to know that there's huge, gigantic problems in the Catholic Church, yeah. the fact that you and Jesse <laughs> have to move around from radio station to radio station, <laughs> from format to format, yeah. start your own radio station. Sure. I mean, you know, guys, think about this. This is insanity. It's insanity. And it makes me so well, sick and sad hey. that you guys have to struggle to get people to listen to you. So that's yeah. my thing. I mean, I'm righteously angry. Ah, uh, you know what, John? Can I interrupt you? Bishop Athanasius, St. Athanasius was exiled many times for his orthodoxy. And Jesse and I haven't had any real issues. I mean, I get people who walk out on me last week at a couple parishes I was at. Jesse does the same thing. I, I mean, Jess, I just think if we're not preaching the truth today— where uh, and they start welcoming you. There's something wrong, John. So I'm I I take it just. Oh, well, I know, I I know, Terry. I'm not going to disagree with you. I love you, man. I've been hooked <laughs> up with you for more than 20 years. I know you have. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you think that you would be in total absolute demand. It's all the way. It's you all know, Jesse's they're fault. To build a radio station and they're spending millions of dollars yeah. paying off lawsuits. It yeah. just makes me. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, brother. Let's keep praying. John, you're hey, John, I'm going to give you some good news. I know you're very yeah. involved with the Fathers of Mercy. Absolutely. Yes. This uh, weekend, I was yes, uh, preaching back-to-back with uh, Father Wade Menezes over in uh, Jacksonville, yep. Florida. So we, we gave them a one-two punch out there in Jacksonville, Florida, and last year they had awesome, Theodore man. McCarrick, so there's a big difference <laughs> between Theodore McCarrick and Father Wade Menezes and Jess Romero. Oh, my gosh. No, oh, dear God. Dear God, well, I I, I love you guys. Thanks, Keep Johnny. Good hey, I'm not giving up, Terry. I I'm don't blame you. Oh, me either, Johnny. brother. No way. You knock me down, no I'm getting surrender. up. Don't stop until you drop. Exactly. That's right. Thanks, yeah. John. Exactly right. All right, All right. brother. Yeah, man. God bless you. He's a good well, Terry, man. We, there's a lot of good bishops that, again, they're uh, and and I, I'm glad that a lot of them are speaking out. Oh yeah. I, let's just be honest. The maj- we ha- it's, we have a small mm-hmm. uh, uh, percentage of wicked bi- wicked priests and bishops, yeah. but they do a lot of damage. They do. They do a lot of damage. He, their, their numbers may be small, but they're very organized. In fact, they're called the St. Gallon Mafia. They're called the yeah. Lavender Mafia. Oh, yeah. They go by many names, yeah. and uh, and they're like moles. They get into some of the key places in the church. Going back to the article. Oh, here's there's so much more in this article. Yeah. Here's, here's some of the other things he says. Uh, he says... That much of the anger of the ch- in the church today is righteous and healthy, but what we do with that anger determines whether it becomes medicine or poison. Did you get that? Yes, that's well said. That righteous anger that you have because of the wicked prelates that we have that yep. are being exposed, it could either turn you against the church, which I call spiritual suicide, or it could make you say, "You know what? I'm done, man. I'm going to become holy." I'm becoming as holy as possible. That's it. And that's going to lead to renewal of you the church. It. That's what Archbishop Chapu says. And just remember, he says, 20 centuries after the resurrection of Jesus, the church continues her mission, and the church survives and continues through the grace of God. But that grace works through people like you and me. And during difficult times, fear can become a toxic element in the lives of Catholics. Right. So the question is, Archbishop Chaput says, do you really believe in Jesus or not? That's it, Jesse. That's the central question. It. Everything turns on that answer. Yep. Do you really believe in Jesus or not? Because if our Christian faith is really grounded on Jesus and we organize our lives, then we have no reason to fear. We have every reason to hope, 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 because hope depends on faith. And Jesus is the object of our faith. He's the object of our hope. And, and our faith can't survive without a foundation of passionate belief in Jesus. That's right. In Jesus. Because without faith in Jesus, we have no hope. And, and remember that hope, it, it, 
hope isn't just another word for this, you know, cheap, cheesy yeah. optimism. Hope, according to the Catholic Church, is the theological virtue That's right. that roots us in the promises of Jesus Christ. Our hope is based on the promises, not of politics or the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. Hope is grounded on the words and the promises of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, brother. Jesse, I've, you get me all fired up. He also pointed out about our future Pope Benedict, his prediction back in the late 60s, right after the revolution uh, of, of the spirit of Vatican II. He said that the church will become so small, we'll have to start afresh. He was prophetic. He said, that's happening now. But I love what he said. Remember how people talk about transparency? And we said, that's not a biblical word. Here's what Archbishop Sh uh, Archbishop Chaput said. We should never underestimate the power of transparency. What? No, he didn't say that. He said, we should never underestimate the power of truth. The human mind, heart, hungers for it. That's what we've been saying, Jesse, since we started. For all of the modern world's vanity and presenting the intellectual <coughs> poverty of our time is stunning. Among the church's greatest treasures is a long tradition of rich philosophical reflections. I urge you to study deeply in that tradition. You know what, Jesse? Bad philosophy breeds bad theology. He nailed it. And I just want to encourage you that this, read the whole article because we ran out of time. But Jess, how can, what, what else did he say that inspired you in this article, brother? Well, he says at the end, and 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 uh, he true he says, but for committed believers, it's an exhilarating time too. Uh, me, that's me right now. That's right. That's why T Bishop Olmsted in his document into the breach, yeah, he calls the the followers of Christ right now. Yeah, he calls us joyful warriors. I love that term. Joyful. What we're warriors. This is a fight. Absolutely. We're in the fight of our life. Make no bones about it. Got it. But why are we joyful warriors? Because we know we're going to win. Exactly. The game is fixed. We know the end of Did the... Did he catch that? Yes. The game is fixed. Praise God. Yeah, Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Why? Because the game is fixed. I love it. And so all we have to do is, as the Bible says, biblical language. We don't use uh, uh, you know, this phony uh, secular language. Uh, you know, Transparency. No, really? biblical language. Persevere, persevere, persevere. Matthew 24, 13. Trust. Jesus says... Those who persevere to the end will be saved. Well said. How do you persevere to the end? Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Keep your eyes on Jesus, Amen, the brother. author and finisher of our faith. Don't take your hands off the steering wheel. Don't veer off to the left. Don't veer off to the right. Stay the course. Stay the course. Catholics, read your Bible every day. Immerse your soul with the word of God. Vaccinate your soul with truth, with Bible truth. Catholics, pick up your rosary. Rush to the battle lines. Become holy. Per pursue Woo! a life of virtue, moral Sign me excellence. Up. <laughs> Sign me up. At Catholics, pick up the rosary and unite your prayers to the heel of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Unite your prayers to her immaculate heel Amen. and assist in crushing the head of the serpent called the culture of death and unite your prayers to the sword of St. Michael the Archangel every single day. Unite your holy communions to the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood and let us crush the culture of death and see the victory of Christ the King one day. And you wonder why we say we're too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be <laughs> disappointed, and if hope was money, we'd be billionaires because we're in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Jesse, finish it, brother. What state should we be living in? Last time I checked in my Thomas guide, oh, that's right, we don't use Thomas <laughs> guides no more. They're, they're in the funny, trash Eddie. now. Yeah. Ma last time I checked, mapquest.com. Yeah. Hey, that says live in the state of grace if you yeah. want to get to heaven. What state don't you want to live in? Don't still live in the state of mortal sin. Go to confession. Get right yeah. with God. It's Lent. Up next, Dr. Ed Mazza will be right with back to him. God bless you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares 
which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.